But back here at home in Australia, housing finance approvals have risen for the second month in a row in August, bolstered by a pause in interest rate increases. Activity in the property sector still remains depressed overall. For some analysis on whether or not the figures were proof that the RBA was right in holding off on tightening last week, Stephen Nash joins us from Big Securities in the studio today. Um, do you think that it, the figures that we did get yesterday were supportive of that move by the RBA? Supportive of a lack of tight, uh, tightening, I think, yes. yes uh, being no move, <laughs> of course. I, I think that, that uh, yeah, uh, the investor side was a little, little uh, poor again. Uh, an, another down move there. Uh, owner occupied fairly, going fairly sideways. Um, I think generally these these numbers are indicative of a cooling uh, property market. Uh, auction clearance rates rates uh, were elevated, but have come right back and. Um, I imagine that uh, you know any rate rises will affect this market quite significantly going, for, going forward. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know it's been it's been ten months of declines when it comes to approvals for new dwellings. This is the idea of how are we financing new builds in an environment where uh, you know you've got to, in all fairness, probably pre-sell 90% um, before you can even go to a bank. To get to get a loan now, 10 months is not is more than a trend. That's going to create longer-term supply problems, is it not? Uh, yeah, well, there's been uh, a lot of talk about supply problems in the property market for a long time. Um, that's one of the arguments, I suppose. People keep on saying that that our market is bulletproof; that property prices can't come down. Uh, however, look, looking globally, that's that's happened globally. So I think mm -hmm. people are starting to question that. Not not to say we're going to get a massive decline in, in house prices. I think something. Uh, Maybe a slight move down or, or, or flat uh, nominal uh, property prices is something to look forward to. Because I mean, yeah. Citigroup came out and said, look, there is excess demand of 25,000 uh, dwellings a year running. Now they haven't just plucked that figure out of you know, the air, surely. No, uh, that's an ongoing argument. The, yeah. you know, that we've got a lot of immigration that's, that's generating a lot of demand for housing. Uh, in it, the, the problem, I think, is uh, with regard to house prices and, and what the RBA is looking at broadly. I think uh, in, in that sphere, we've seen a lot of cooling in prices. I think that's what the RBA wants. I think the, the property market the RBA wants it to be, it doesn't want it any cooler than this. Because if it gets too cool, it, it, we get downward in the minimum in housing prices. That is not good for the financial system as a whole, not good for the banking system. Right. So you wouldn't say that the RBA welcomes this kind of news and it, they think that that's kind of putting things where it wants wants the, the economy to go. Basically, the, the, yeah, the housing market is where the, the RBA, I think, wants, wants it at the moment. I, mean, mm. um, I suppose that explains to some extent why they didn't move. Uh, we, have, we have the CPI. The, the, the other thing is we've got a strong employment market, yeah. but we're not seeing the flow through into investor confidence. Why is there that kind of brick wall that we hit? There was only one bit of the data yesterday, which was uh, approvals for existing dwellings yeah. that rose. Everything else was actually quite sizably weaker. Well, I think, I mean, uh, the average investor is looking, looking at the, the news these days and it's not particularly rising in the developed world. I mean, we keep on seeing uh, talk of quantitative easing and other things in, in the US. Uh, things are pretty tough globally and I think people are, are realising that and factoring that into their in investment uh, mm. scenarios. Mm. Um, we have seen significant declines in property prices globally. So I think people are just being realistic. It doesn't mean it's, it, it, it's the end of the world or anything. It, it just means people are less optimistic than they have been. And we're also right. anticipating increases from the banks themselves in terms of borrowing rates. Um, whenever we speak to the guys that follow the bond markets, they say there does seem to be justification for the, for the banks to move outside the RBA moves. Yeah. But then again, if, if there was that justification, why wouldn't they just do it? Why do they have to wait for the RBA increase? Well, I think to, to some extent the, the banks have been assisted in the recent past, as you know, with the global financial crisis. And to some extent, uh, you know, it's a bit of payback for, for, uh, for the government in the sense that the banks might have to subsidise these lower margins with, with, uh, with earnings from other parts of the bank. For the time being, uh, I think the average cost of funding is rising as, as cheaper funding rolls off and more expensive funding is is maintained. Uh, recently, we've seen some uh, comments from some of the leaders of the banks mm. saying that it, it's basically inevitable that rates go up, and I think Except that they is. They want the cover of an RBA increase, which kind of takes away from the argument that yeah, that they, they are justified. Uh, in I, I think sooner or later we will we will see it. Um, mm. There obviously will be some um, negotiations behind the scenes on this. I'm just wondering though, just back on this issue of 
what it means for people out there. Rick Badalino last week, uh, Assistant Governor, saying mm. there are significant issues limiting housing supplies. It's not just third-party economists that are on this bandwagon. And at what point does it become inflationary? If you, I mean, you can either take one of two arguments. You know, I can either say there's not a supply issue. Yeah. You'll be a, you can be a complete skeptic on that, or you'll buy the Badalino argument now, alongside economists which says there are bottlenecks being created, and that's going to be inflationary. Because it will put, eventually, it will swing round to higher prices. Um, it's, it, it really depends on, in terms of uh, the preparedness of investors to bid up prices and take on extra debt. And it was, as we've seen in the, in the finance uh, numbers, that they're not prepared to do that right now. Mm. At some point in, in the future, yes, those pressures will build and we may see some elevation of prices. But at mm. this point, I think people are just looking at... Right. the global situation which is not rosy. Mm -hmm. Which um, and on a daily basis is not rosy to the point we're talking about more stimulus out of the Federal Reserve yeah. in the form of QE2. Mm -hmm. um, in some sense I think that you believe that we won't actually get a whole lot more impact if QE2 is actually implemented. Well we've been talking about this for quite a while. QE2, how, I mean how long are we going to be talking about this? Uh, to some extent we've already had it in the sense that we've got lower rates in the US. I mean that's the part of the, the point of quantitative easing mm -hmm. where bonds are purchased. The market seems to be taken, particularly the equity market, seems to be of the view that, well, it doesn't matter how bad the news is, and the employment report was pretty bad on Friday. It doesn't matter how bad it is, it just means that the Fed's going to do more stimulus. There's a limit to what the Fed can do. And I think the market has probably got the idea or, or the expectation of QE2 is enlarged to such a degree that what, whatever the reality is, it's not going to be good enough, I think, for the equity market. So how are investors actually then, as, as they approach that key... Uh, D-Day moment, mm. how are they actually handling it? I mean, are you saying that they're, they're going short <sighs> greenbacks? Are they, are they on that party where, which says, you know, it could just all spike you know, on, on, on this disappointment? Or what, what's oh, the advice? We, I think investors have been, been on the complacent side. As I said, I think, they think that they've got this put that's granted by Bernanke that everything will be okay mm. and that the, the QE2 will do everything. Mm. That, that, that there is no possibility of the economy failing from here mm. based on what the Fed is going to do. And I think that's a bit of an optimistic view. I think eventually the market will say, well, uh, this QE2 is not, is not big enough, it's not as good as we thought. We have to revise things down a little bit so we get a correction in the equity market. Maybe a small up move in bond yields, mm. but broadly I think bond yields are probably where they should be right now. Right. Stephen, we have to leave there for now, but Thank we'll look forward to chatting to you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Stephen Nash and Carson with me in the studio as well. And after the break, we'll pick up on that point as well with St George Chief Economist Justin Smoke, who joins us in just a moment.